Hi, everyone. Uh, just wanted to thank you for being here and thank you, David, for having me. Uh, I want to present to you today a new kind of trading. Uh, I come from a little bit different place from most traders. I've been doing this for, a, I guess it's 40 years now. Um, and I've learned a lot over that period of time, which is why I spend most of my time uh, helping traders with their mental and emotional issues and mental and emotional management, because that's the area that traders um, get very little help in and most traders pay very little attention, but that's for another, uh, that's for another discussion. Uh, I mention it because with that in mind, with the idea of, of making sure your mental and emotional management and so that you don't get in your, in your own way when you try to follow your trading plan, it's important that you keep your trading plan simple. That's one way to keep the mental and emotional management in check and easy to do to make trading fun instead of stressful. And the other main, the other main issue is to love to take losses. I know that sounds crazy. And I, I, don't, I don't mean you're happy about it and that you want to do it all the time. But you want to respect losses as an equal part of the overall winning. And what I'm about to show you uh, respects that with, with great emphasis. And uh, because the, there is no trading plan that, can, um, that, that, it, that wins all the time. Because if that's the case, there'll soon be a time in that trading plan where it's going to lose all the time. Uh, most trading plans need to breathe and adjust with different market conditions and so on, which also is another discussion. But when you combine two ways of trading, and, and we're talking about swing and scalp in this particular case, not long-term trading, but, but trading for the day trader, uh, although what I'm about to describe to you also works in with longer-term charts, the idea of Swinging, swing and scalp trading in the same uh, trading plan starts to make a heck of a lot of sense when you're looking for opportunities and want to put losses behind you. And I'm going to show you exactly what that means. So I look at this as a new kind of trading that respects that, that within the structure of the trading plan and the way you trade respects that losses are an equal part of the overall winning and uh but but leaves for uh for your trading pleasure uh the ability to to take some really good swing trades and and that's really what you live for because what i'm about to show you um the losses and the scalps take care of themselves and what you do is you take home the swings. Okay, so um, let's get started. Uh, first of all, let me give you the uh, disclaimer that um, what I'm about to tell you and and, and talk to you about is uh, is speculative, and there's no reason why you should put it in any other category. The money that you use for what I'm about to show you uh, should be speculative money, meaning money that if you lose, it doesn't change your lifestyle in, in, in one bit. It doesn't make you any less happy or any less uh, responsible as a person uh, to your loved ones and so on. If, if this doesn't, it's, it's really to, to extend, um, to, to make a lot from a little, uh, but not to lose uh, that, would, uh, that would make your lifestyle any different. And so uh, every, that's a different proportion for everybody. And you have to measure your, your, yourself, talk to your financial advisor uh, before doing anything. And past performance is not indicative of future results. Okay, so let me show you what I do and what I've learned to have uh, make, make trading fun and exciting. Um, again, because I've learned to take advantage of un the understanding of the mental and emotional experience in trading and put it in my favor rather than having it work against me. And, and yes, I say 39 years experience. I think it's going to be four. It is 40. Um, and um, but this particular slide that I threw in here doesn't say that yet, but it will. Uh, I've written several books. 
this is a um, this is actually a video, not a book uh, that that somebody at the trading expo took of me and sells it online. It's not even mine. But I have several books. Uh, I've probably written eight or nine of them. There's still two that are available on on um, Amazon. So if if you respect people who write books, I guess you can respect me for that. Uh, I've learned to um, judge people more on whether I'm feeling it from them <laughs> than whether they've written a book. Um, but whatever, you do what you want. Payne Weber, uh, worked for them. I was a commodity specialist for them. International Trading Group, oh, it was a very large option organization before there were exchange traded options. Uh, this is the firm where I, um, where I watched 60 traders at a time um, make money. Most of them did not make money, but many of them did. And those are the, where I learned my lessons as far as uh, what makes a good trader and what doesn't make a good trader. Uh, I took some of those lessons and opened uh, my own uh, introducing broker. I was also a CTA, managed millions for rich people. And um, we had a minimum, I had a minimum of uh, $250,000 to be in it. And most of them were m much more than that. Um, I couldn't think of a better name than my own name at the time. I was pretty heady at the time. And uh, <laughs> my star was bright, still is. Uh, but I was more into, um, you know, uh, trading other people's money as opposed to training you on how to fish rather than letting me fish for you. Uh, but the discipline trader is probably what I, it is what I'm most proud of. Uh, the discipline trader is where we focus. And if you go to the disciplinetrader.com, you'll see what that's all about. But it's all about helping you with the mental and emotional uh, part of your trading game. All right. The, the number of traders have skyrocketed skyrocketed in, in the last seven, eight, 10 years. And it's primarily, and, and really in the last two or three years with the, the stock market moving up and people having more discretionary money, the kind of money that I described it, if you lost it, it wouldn't change your lifestyle. Baby boomers, um, are, are we're, we're, I'm, a, I'm one of those baby boomers and uh, you know, you look for extra income, and, you know, it's never enough, um, you're always, when you get that, that house on the hill, you want the whole hill. You, you never, you know, people who achieve, they, they always want more. And, and, and there's a limit to, to, to achieving things and achieving other things in life. And I think as you get older, you realize that too. But the idea is that baby boomers, uh, they want to have some fun in the market. And they're looking for ways to, uh, you know, buy something that's going to make them quick money and they can be a hero and have some fun without hurting themselves financially. And there's a lot of baby boomers out there. With, uh, with extra capital. Uh, COVID um, epidemic has created a lot of stay-at-home traders, which I've, I've been able to help um, some starting out a lot having, um, you know, I, I was talking to David before, we, we, uh, before I started presenting here about uh, running into people. They tell me they have 10 years experience, but they really haven't been able to win on a consistent basis. And I always ask them, if they've had one 10 years of experience of growth or they had one year experience 10 times. So uh, sometimes a, a beginner is the best way to, to place to learn. And, and some people who have been trading for 10 or 20 years, they still really should consider, some, consider themselves beginners and go uh, forward from there. And with extremely low interest rates, um, you know, it's, it's people have a lot of money. Their real estate value is going up. They can borrow a little bit and have some fun. So, um, but remember that in trading, the strong take from the weak, that, that 10%, the, some of them are, are making a lot of money, um, you know, done well over the years. And a lot of it is because most traders are weak, uh, again, mentally and emotionally. And the reason they're weak mentally and emotionally is because they cannot stick to their trading plan and they keep on kicking themselves. Most traders have a pretty good trading plan, but they can't stick to it. So I've learned to construct trading plans that are easy to stick to and that honor that idea of taking losses are okay and let's move on. Because once you close out a loss, as long as you keep it very small, then you, you're, you're ready and you have the next um, you're, you're ready for the next opportunity. And that's all you want as a trader. You want another opportunity and another opportunity. I, I want to get out of the losers as quickly as I can. I want to I grab the winners as quickly as I can. But I also want to be able to 
um, see a winner really um, uh, really expand if 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 it's going to happen. So I want I want both, and I'm about to show you how to do that um, in general terms. Now, general strategy of being a success, successful trader. Uh, traders shoot for a high frequency of winning trades with targeted profits, usually small ones. These are scalpers. And immediately and without hesitation, limit losses no matter how they feel about a trade. And I think that's an important part of, of what we need to pause on, and that's you need to keep the losses small. And when I say that, I mean 2%. You can never take a position. Uh, if, I'm, if I'm approaching the silver market, um, then I, I don't want, I'm, I, and I have a $10,000 account, I may not be able to get in. If I have a $20,000 account, I can look at the mini or the micro type contracts in the, uh, in the silver and, and be able to have a couple of positions where I have flexibility. So I'm always looking, and, and if I lose, I'm going to keep that under the, the 2% of my total uh, equity on a trade. Because this way, if I lose four or five trades in a row, and it will happen, it will happen with the best trading plans. It means that my, uh, means my, the, the uh, receding of my equity will be no, long, no more than 10% if I lost the full 2% on each of five trades. If you lose more than five trades in a row, I think you gotta, you gotta take a pause and take a look at what's going on. But what I'm saying is that you don't want to dig a hole because it only takes 11% of your remaining equity to recover that 10% that you lost. But as those numbers get small, get, get larger, when, if, you, if, you, if you lose 25% of your money, um, you know, it, it's going to take 30 plus percent to, to move high, to get it back. And if you lose half your money, you need to double what's left. So it gets pretty ugly once you cross that 20% area. So please, if you learn nothing from here, if you don't ever have a relationship with me or, or, at all or anybody that's going to be speaking, uh, know that keeping your losses small is, is the prime objective. And at the same time, allowing yourself to have a nice uh, profit in a trade. Numerous successful small trades can add up to impressive annualized gains as long as the losing trades are nipped firmly and quickly in the bud. And that, that's the, this is the conservative part of what you should be thinking about. Um, but you got to let something run if it's going to run, you know, because that's, that's really what we're here for, isn't it? Yeah. All right. There's three types of trading. There's scalping. There's swing trading. Scalping meaning take a quick profit when you get it. Let the market you know, find a trigger that, 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 that usually is the, is the indication that you're going to get a, 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 a quick move right away. That's what scalpers look for. They look for accumulations and breakouts or breakdowns from accumulations. So they know the first move is going to be um, quick and they're going to grab whatever that quickness gives them. A swing trading is uh, more of a uh, where you're looking at um, swings in price. Uh, you, you never define something with the same word as what it is. But <laughs> you're looking at a trend, you may be watching a correction of a trend and then they, and then watching for a trigger to continue that trend and therefore uh, taking advantage of a trend and riding that trend until you get more resistance where you get a, a longer gain. Uh, so swing trading is another way of trading. And then there's position trading where you're, you're taking very long-term positions, sometimes um, months, sometimes weeks, months, sometimes years and decades. Uh, I know some people have been holding Apple for decades. Um, and have done pretty darn well with it. So for this discussion, we're going to concentrate on scalping and swing trading. Here are some advantages and disadvantages of scalping and swing trading. I want to uh, be mindful of my time here. Um, so if I uh, take a while well, take a sip here, I'll watch the clock. Um, the advantages of scalping. Um, generally small prescribed losses, okay? Because you're taking small gains and you want to keep that, um, your win to loss ratio uh, or, or your potential win to loss ratio at at least two to one. I've seen some pretty good trading plans with one and a half to one, you know, three to one with some, depending on, but, but you want to 
you, you want to keep the loss part very small and scalping, since you're not asking a lot for the market, the mar you've, you've got to ask even less of, of your parameters for losing. Uh, traders with limited time to trade can complete trades. Uh, I coached a trader last year uh, who ran a very large sales firm and uh, he only had an hour to trade every day. So we worked on uh, the, the mental and emotional capacities for that as well as uh, working with his trading plan that uh, allowed him to uh, have a number of opportunities in a very short period of time uh, without um, compromising his main uh, uh, form of income. So uh, it was very, very rewarding, not only for him, but for me. I just love, listen, when you're in this 40 years, it's not all about the money that you make. That, that left a long time ago. What, what, I, what, I, what I'm into is seeing somebody go from struggle to, to facing themselves in the mirror and then realizing that they need a simpler plan, that they need to, um, that they need to approach very, in a simple way, their mental and emotional situation and take action to do that. We do that through our coaching and through a, a discipline trader mastery program on a do it yourself basis. But anyway, the trader, you, you, the advantages is that you generally have small prescribed losses and you're trading um, with limited time to trade can, uh, and, and that's a good thing. Disadvantage is that, is that by prescription, the, the part of the definition of scalping is taking a quick profit. Now, sometimes quick, if you're a scalper that, 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 uh, uh, that trades into reports, uh, into job reports and so on, sometimes that quick two, three, five, 10, 20 seconds minute could be big money. So you, you gotta be careful there. That's why uh, those kinds of people use limits and stops, uh, mostly limits to, to grab what they can in, in there, right? They use both, but in order to take the profit because it's the whipsaw, they wanna take that initial move. So um, another discussion, but the small win by prescription. And chop can result in chewing up account equity without the possibility of large gains. I mean, in a scalping, you're taking a quick loss, you're taking a quick profit. You're not in there for the big moves like we've seen in crude and, 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 and um, soybeans and so on. Now, you can take advantage of what you've identified as a strong, uh, a strong trend or, or strong movement by only taking trades on the long side or only taking trades on the short side in a market that's going down. So though you can you can take advantage of what's around you, but each trade is not going to be um, uh, big money when you're scalping. Okay. And and if you've ever seen Marina, if you're a if you're a scalp, there's a gal named Marina out there, uh, you'll see her. She wears a she lives in Guatemala and she wears a cowboy hat. And she may be even on this, I'm sure David has her on, but she's she's fun to listen to, terrific scalper, and uh, she really comes from a good place. So if you if you get a chance to listen to her, she's absolutely terrific and a really, a really nice person, uh, much nicer than me. Well, about the same. Okay. But the psychological challenge of scalping, I could have had much bigger, pro I could have had a much bigger profit if I stay in. You know, people who scalp, people go from scalping to swing trading to position trading, but because they, there's always some, so the grass is always greener on the other side. And if you keep hopping from one thing to another, you'll never master scalping. You'll never master swing trading. You never, that's why I like to combine the two and master both at the same time. I'm going to show you how to do that. The, um, but the scalper who is taking short trades, short, short um, profits and, and, and an even shorter loss per trade, when the market takes off, it's easy to say to yourself, I could have had a much bigger profit if I had just stayed in. So there's some psychological challenge with being a scalper. Um, and the advantages and disadvantages of swing trading. Uh, the advantages, opportunity for a large gain. I mean, that's it's kind of what you want. I mean, it's what you're here for to a large degree. Now, a scalper adds up all those nice scalps and gets a large, nice large uh, payday at the end of the day of the week. And that's fine, too. Uh, but it's nice to have those chunks, isn't it? Uh, traders with limited time to trade also can complete trades in the swing trading. You can you can swing trade in a five minute chart, a ten minute chart, even a two and three minute chart. A lot of the people we we coach actually are trading two and three minute charts because they have small accounts. I don't, and and but it's amazing uh, how certain even what I'm going to show you holds up on the 
on the shorter term charts. The longer term charts can be truer to trading uh, rules. I think most most traders with experience will will agree with that. Um, the disadvantages of of swing trading is that you can often give back a big profit before you offset it, before you take your profit. You start with a trade, it takes off, and you want to you, you you put in your moving average. Or you're waiting. You're waiting for two moving averages to cross back the other side before you take your profit. Sometimes the market come all the way back, and sometimes it can come all the way back to take all your profit. Or a, a winner can become a loser. So swing traders, you know, there's an, a disadvantage there from us again from a, a psychological standpoint that you that you wind up taking your trades out too early as a swing trader and acting more like a scalper. And then the market takes off even longer. You say, why didn't I follow my trading plan? I, why was I scared that the market was going to come back? So there are some disadvantages to swing trading. And, uh, and, and of course, there's a larger potential loss when you swing trade. Um, and the psychological challenge, which is really where, um, where I've always come in to help traders and why I build trading plans that are simple uh, and easy to follow. Because when, when a trade takes off and then comes back and you you give back most or all of what you had. You say to yourself, boy, I spent a lot of time in this trade. And, and if I had just taken the profit when I had it, instead of asking for more all the time, um, you know, life, I would feel much better about myself as a human being. <laughs> I mean, sometimes traders, and, and I'm, I'm not laughing, I, I am laughing because I'm, I'm being, a, being a little humorous here, but this is a tough thing. This is where, this is where traders, you know, they don't keep their positive expectancy. They, they and, you know, um, I, I just want to, to emphasize the fact that if you're not enjoying your trading, it really means that there's something that you're not doing that you could be doing to offset those negative feelings about what you're doing. And understand that trading is a business and that you need to frame what you're doing as a business. It really can help you from a psychological standpoint. Um, and, and it's also helpful in this particular case, in this particular presentation, to have both swing trading and scalping in the same trading plan. So what if, we, what if there were a way to combine the benefits of both swing trading and scalping, where you had small prescribed losses, where you can take small gains frequently, but, and you had the opportunity for large gains. I mean, what if that existed? And, and maybe you've seen it exist in certain ways, but I think I've got a way, uh, I know I've got a way that I think um, if you try, you'll, you'll really like it. Um, you, um, and you can also avoid account draining and chopping markets. What if you had all of that? And let's stop with the theatrics and sh let's get to some charts. Because I wanna show you in terms of the charts, um, I, I want to show you this, though. This is it's a trading plan that I call Loaded Gun. And, and, I, I, and my wife hates the, because it's a, kind of a violent name for a, for a, uh, a trading plan. And, and I guess I agree with her. But it's just that this particular plan took off. And now I can't change the name. And there's a lot of people trading it. And, and, and I can't change it now. Uh, I should have should have thought of it before but this is this is a um this is a, a a bar chart of course a candlestick chart i'm sorry a candle chart of which uh let me describe what this is this is say a 10 minute chart could be any time frame but in that time frame it created this candle with these wicks uh they call them wicks or tails um, and this is the body of the candle. And what the body of the candle frames is the open and close during that frame of time. For instance, if this is a 10 minute bar chart, then this body shows you where the market opened and closed in that 10 minute period. But how do you know whether it opened here or closed? It's a green candle, which means that the close is above the open. And therefore we know that the market opened here, whatever that price correlates to and closed here. And that during that, that time period, the 10 minute time period, the market actually had some price action above and below the opening and closing range. Uh, but uh, the Japanese candlestick makers who were Japanese farmers of, I guess it's about three or four, 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 
maybe five, three, four hundred years ago, um, farmers used this they they to to um, to monitor the price action of grain of the grains and um, they paid attention to the bodies and very little attention to the wicks and I do too. Um, there is some attention. I mean, I, I've combined Eastern and Western, and as, as probably you have, and maybe don't even know it. Um, but uh, this is an Eastern way of looking at things. This is a smaller body, uh, but still during a 10 minute period, where you had a very small range in the body, which means that the open and the close of that 10 minute period were about the same. Uh, and the, the, the trades outside would spent most of the price action, but it opened and closed in, in, with an indecision. And that's my point here. I see this as indecisive. The market did not know where to go. In fact, if this were a line, it would be called a doji. This is called a spinner. Uh, and doji would be where the open and close were exactly the same price, which is total indecision for this period of time. Didn't know where to go. Opened and closed at the same price. Well, if you have a candle like that, and then you follow it with another candle that is decisive, and it moves through a, an important, um, what I use, I use exponential moving averages. If, if there's a moving average that's kind of coming here, and this is on one side of the moving average, and the extension is on the other side of the moving average, then what you have is a breakout in my terms of from indecision to a definitive move. Now, the stronger this move is, the more, the more excited I get about the potential for continued upward move. The problem is that when you take this trade, your stop goes below the formation. And therefore you must, you must measure the distance from here to where you put your stop in a tick or two under the formation. Uh, traders have tendencies. I like to put it one stop, one tick below or one increment below. Uh, other traders like to give it a little room because they know guys like me are putting it one increment below. So they're making three increments below. So sometimes they'll stay in a trade longer than I will. And, but, but when they get hit, they lose more than I do. And it all works out in the wash when you're talking about where to put your stop. So do it the way you want. But the idea is here, and I'm always buying multiple positions. And, and so in this demonstration uh, for the rest of my time here, um, which, is, uh, which is less than a half hour, it's about 20, 25 minutes, I'm going to, um, I'm going to talk to you about uh, one tick below here. And I'm, and, and I'm always going to buy two positions uh, with larger accounts, you know, you can, you can buy more and you can scale out and do a lot of other things. But when you measure your risk, you have to see what the market is going to uh, lose, what you're going to lose between this point where you get in, because you're, you're going to be buying at the close of this. In other words, I have my, my, my mouse and I'm waiting for this to close. It's crossed the moving average that, that I wanted to cross and that I use and I and I'm waiting for that market to, try, and I have my, my finger on the, and as soon as boom, it hits, and the, this market closes on the first tick of the next bar, I'm, I'm pressing my market to be a buyer on the, at the market, okay? So you must measure this point right here, where you got in, to a tick below, and two positions. So if that is equivalent to greater than 2% of the value of the account, this is not a trade. So when I say that I like to see a nice big bar here, sometimes I can't get into that trade. Now there's a ways of doing it in the course that I teach you, but, but the pure skeletal version that I'm describing here, uh, you, you need to measure it. And so this is not a trade if it's greater than 2%, okay? So let's, let's get to, um, I'm going to uh, just move on to another part of, uh, let's get, let's look at some charts and I wanna show you how, how this works. I wanna look at uh, some of the markets. Oh, let's take, uh, I like, crude has been in the news. Let's take a look at crude. Um, and here's how, how I set up my charts. Um, here's the crude market. Let's look at the daily 
okay, just to give you an idea of how this may work. And I put some arrows in here. And I'm always, I didn't do it today, but I'm always putting in arrows that, that are in this particular way of looking at things. So here is, here is a situation where you have a, let, let's look at this one because it's, it's right in front of us, okay? Let's make it a little bigger so that we can see it. Uh, here is a uh, indecision, okay? Followed by a movement through the moving average, okay? A, this is a, a dramatic move through the moving average and it's dramatic in a couple of ways. And not only is it dramatic compared to the two bodies, but it's dramatic because we're taking out a bunch of highs and we're, uh, and, and it's the largest body uh, looks like for, um, for a good, uh, for, for a good two weeks here. So this is a major trigger for me. Uh, I also use um, it for certain confirmations when I want from using multiple, it helps me with position sizing. I can't get into that today. I want to, I want to stick to the purity of this signal and, and, and what to do and how I combine scalping with, uh, with, uh, swing trading. I'm buying two positions here. I'm putting my stop down here, selling two on a stop. And the next thing I do is I'm putting a sell limit on one of those two positions at an equal distance of this bar length. So if this bar is, what am I looking at? Uh, I'm looking at the uh, crude oil, if this is a dollar in crude, okay, then I'm putting where I measure the top, the close here, and I measure $1, and I, 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 I put in a sell limit for one of my two positions here to sell one to take my scalp. So my scalp distance is always the distance in, of this body, of the, the length of the body, of the extension body. Uh, in this particular case, um, this may have, this probably was not a, a unless you had a very large account this this is a bit but this but you gotta be you gotta always measure your risk here's another one here here's a um here's a formation okay so we were gonna buy two here put your stop down here to sell two then we sell one right here which means that but in the with the ne the next day we would be having, we sold two. And again, I'm, I, I probably shouldn't be on a, on a daily chart when I'm talking about scalping, and, but you can use this on any chart. Um, I just want to show you the methodology. When I take this profit, when I take the profit on one, I move my, my break even, my stop from where it was to break even on the second position. And I ride the moving average. Now I cannot get into where I sell. In this particular case, uh, this would have taken me out at break even. Th this is this was um, a dramatic move that would have taken me out at break even, but I would have had my scalp. So in this particular move, I would have had a, ni a nice scalp profit, and um, and I I wouldn't have said to myself, see if you were, if this was a strictly a scalp a swing trade, you would be saying to yourself, why didn't I take? You did take some. OK, you did say, and that's the beauty of this system. You're taking some and giving some to others. Look at this. In this particular case, we we bought two. We sell one up here right an equal distance to the body. And when we do that, we move the, the, the swing trade uh, position to break even. And we ride this up. This was a, this is a big move. All right. I mean, this is a move from this is a ten dollar move. This is a ten thousand dollar move in a in, in one position let's get to something that's um oh, i also want to say that this is a losing trade okay uh, you, first you had to measure this but we also have rules on how long we we will allow something to mature before we get out of something okay um because if this take the further we move from the trigger the less effect the trigger has and um, so we, we, there's a specific number that we use before we actually would have been out in this area and taken a, a, sh a short loss here. Um, and um, there were no other uh, trades until we reached, right, no, no other trades with that. Oh, here's a losing trade right here. Okay, there's a losing trade right here. I like to see the body at least three or four times the size of, of the indecision body. In this particular case, this was a total loss, okay? And you quickly take that loss because you wanna get into a situation where you get 
a lot of, when you get these, so you continue to move on. Again, I don't, I'm not very, I'm not emotional about losses. And I think the more you look at this system, and I always give you 60 days to work with it, back test it, uh, and you can ask for your money back. I, I, I just want you to, let's take a look at a shorter term chart. Let's look at, take a look at the 10. I trade a lot of 10 uh, because it's, it's good for a lot of size accounts. Now here's, um, here's a, don't worry about the moving averages. That's something else for another system. But look at this right here. Here's a nice, you know, I love this kind of a, see, it's big, it's big, it's small, but it's big compared to everything that's preceded it. So what a nice signal to take. It's taking out a bunch of highs, two hours worth of highs. And, and, and so you buy two here, you put your stop down here, you measure the body, you, you, you sell one here. In other words, you, you, Take the length of this body, you measure that from the close, you put your, your sell limit here, you're going to you get you get out on this bar, and then you move your stop to break even on the remaining. And look, you come all the way here. Now, let me let me look again. I can't get into where we sell and how we sell, but I'm looking here and I'm seeing, yeah, you would have been out right on this bar, somewhere in this bar right here. You would have you would have been tapped out of the swing trade. So the swing trade would have been here, but you would have been right, but that's fine. Let me out because I want the next trade because I know that overall, I'm gonna have a pretty good time. So here's another trade, okay? Now this is not a trade uh, for various reasons. It's, it's not big enough bar it's compared to the one before, but look, Doji, very clear. Again, we're getting a chance to take out a lot of highs, which I like. Doji, buy two, sorry. Uh, Buy two, limit sell here, moving higher. Okay, we'll probably get out right this way. A limit sell was probably hit. If not, it was here. And then we move our stop to break even. And then we would have been stopped out on that second position when this market moved down because our break even was here. But that's okay. I made money on my scalp. And yes, it went on without me. And I wish I had a system that, but it's not every system will be able to do everything. You have to have rules. And my rule, Number one, control the risk, control the risk. Number two rule, control the risk, okay? Control the risk. Here's another one, here's another trade. Let's see, uh, is this a trade? No, it's, and, and it's not a trade because this is on the wrong side of, of this. In other words, I like to see the extension bar uh, where you have the breakout occur on the, on the other side of the moving average. And we use specific moving averages. Here's, uh, here's a trade, this actually did break. Uh, and it is three times. So um, we take our scalp here. In other words, you're selling two here, take a scalp here and your break even is knocked out very quickly here, but that's okay. Cause I want to get onto the next trade. Cause what I want is this, this is what I want. So let's get done with this. And let me take my scalp. I don't care if I gave it back on the second position. Let's move on. All right, now we you can tell I'm a type A. <laughs> okay, we got about 10 or 12 minutes left. So let's keep going here. We got, um, here's another signal, okay? Uh, nice, I love this signal because we got a bunch of tails here. We're, we're trying to make a high and, and no, not much success. We're going moving sideways. We get our signal here. We're selling two here and we're, we're putting our stop up here. And we, we got scared here if you're one to get scared, but we didn't, our stop is here. We didn't get stopped out this way. And, and, uh, there are some rules that would have, but did, but we did not have our rules in this system. We'd still be in the trade and we were in the trade all the way down to here until we have a reversal here. We have, I have what we call nuances um, and nuances are rules that you can add or not add depending on your style of trading and your personality. Again, I want to match the trading plan to you. If you're a type A um, or if you're, if you're, if you're a type A, there's certain nuances that you may want to take that doesn't affect the overall value of the trading plan and may make your results just fractionally different from somebody who doesn't take the plan, but it allows you to stick with the plan because it matches your personality. Um, and uh, right here is one of those nuances where a lot of people, a lot of traders like to stay in trades or a lot of, a lot of traders like to see an opposite and want to, and want to, just take on a new trade because they, they think it's good. I like, I like to reverse on these positions. It's my thing. Okay. 
and so if I adopted that rule as part of the that nuance in, in my version of the trading plan, then I would I would have reversed right here. And reverse means taking buying three here. And when I say buying three here, you would have shorted two here. You would have taken your profit out on the scalp here on the single position, and then you would have ridden the scalp the, the swing trade all the way down to here. And then this reversal, you would have offset the swing trade. So taking your profit from here to here, which was a nice profit, and you would have gone long two more, of which you would have been stopped out on both positions here. Now, uh, that would have offset some of the swing trade profit, but you still had your scalp in the end. Here's another particular situation. Buy two, take your scalp, move on. The market most sideways, you'd still be in this trade. Uh, although I like to get out of trades. Of, I don't hold trades overnight when I'm trading like this, and probably you shouldn't either, especially in a market like the crude oil. Okay, so there's a couple of trading uh, situations in the crude oil. Uh, let's look at the copper is something that I've been following. You know, I like to trade things in the news, and really so should you. Not because you want to listen to the news and make a trade, but be, you know there's going to be action. Okay, here's a 10-minute, uh, let's see if I, yeah, mark this one up. A little because I've been I've been working with the the copper. Here's a and, and this is uh, this is last cup. This is uh, the the last day of trading. Uh, this is the middle of the night. Also, when I'm doing demonstrations, I generally mark off seven a, seven p.m. or seven a.m. to five p.m. because that's really reality for me. Uh, and although if you're in Singapore, I have a lot of traders that like to stay up at night because they like the action in the middle of the night. Whoever you are. Um, this works any time of the day. Here's a signal in the copper. I like copper because we're we're talking about you know we're fixing roads and bridges and that's going to be copper. And we're talking about a you know the whole economy coming back. This is copper, and there are going to be disappointments. There's going to be you know lack of disappointments. There's going to be action. It's where I want to be. All right. So here is a trigger. Buy two, sell one at the limit. You we would have been selling here, and you would have been knocked out of the swing on the break even. Another chance to go long. Uh, you would have taken your profit on the swing, on the scalp trade right away. And you would have, again, gotten knocked out on this one on the break even. You get a lot, you get, you'll get knocked out of a lot of swing trades, but you took your scalp. I just want to move on. Let me have the opportunity to do something like this. Okay. Now, here's a, here's a, a larger, you've got to measure this and see whether uh, selling to here. And putting your stop up here is going to be above two percent. If it's not, then you can wait for. I show you how to in the course how to wait for a retracement. One of the nuances, uh, but don't just do that. Don't take anything that I'm doing here and trying to make a trading plan out of it. There are too many small rules that are very important that I'm not telling you about because I want you to take this seriously. I want you to 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 buy the course, and then I want you to spend sixty days with it if you have to. And if you don't like it, you can. I want you to ask me for the money back. And if you do like it, I want you to be on the team with me, with all the other people that have a private site. We have a private uh, Facebook group that we, and we, we get together every month and we talk about our successes and our, our thoughts and our struggles. If, if there's a new person that doesn't quite get it, we're, we're together in this. Okay. This is where, this is the way I've formulated this. So selling two here, you actually, I did measure this. You did take a, oh no, you didn't. You missed it by a couple of ticks of which right here, you would have reversed and, and bought two, okay? So you're gonna take your profit, you're gonna take your loss from here to here on both your positions because you never got the scalp, okay? And then you're going to proceed to lose on this one, okay? You Nothing's happening. And again, there's a way, there's a nuance that we use that would have limited this particular, um, and if it, even if it didn't, you take this loss because it's within your 2% parameter. Here's another trade because we'll want, what we want is the next trade. Here's the next trade of which we take our scalp and we break even on the second. Um, and I want to show, let's see, I want to show you something real quick. Let's see. Uh, let, let me show you this before because I don't have too much time. Um, I, I think you get the point of what I'm trying to say here. I want to show you what I do. Here's the 10 minute. I've got all my commodities here. The ones that fit uh, th that I trade, and if you have a small account, maybe you want to have corn in here. You want to have uh, the ones with the, you know, the, the mini S and P, the mini Nasdaq, the micro, the micro is all you want to have. The half contract of, of the of the currencies. You want the small. You, you monitor these. And what I do is I'm and and since they all fit my parameter, I don't care. 
I mean, and listen, some people focus on a particular market and that's cool too, uh, because you can vary time frames. And I'm going to show you that in a second. But if you're somebody that doesn't care which market they're in and understand that every market is, is, uh, has potential profit, I'm looking for a doji. And when I see a doji, see right here, if, I, when, if this hadn't been spent and I see this going on, this is soybeans and I know it's been having a good time and I know there's half contracts if I have a small account. This is a nice, this is a nice um, entry right here. I'd measure and see if I can afford it and I can. So I put my, my I take my scalp here I buy two here, take my scalp here, and I get knocked out of the break even right away. Okay, good, let's go. I'm continuing to look. This is on my 10 minute, see what's happening here. Uh, here's another, well, that, that doesn't look like it broke through. Uh, here's one right here where I sold two and I'm still in it. Remember my, my whatever the high point of the two, this is the trigger, right? Indecision, extension. And whichever is the higher in a short trade, that's where you're putting your stop. You didn't knock me out. And I took my scalp here. It took me some time. And, uh, you know, maybe you use one of the nuances. And now you're probably, even the nuance would have gotten you, had your scalp here. And then you would have been knocked out here um, of your, of your uh, you wouldn't have had the run. So, and I, and I have different time frames. okay? I, I usually have a five I don't have here. Uh, on this uh, this particular day, I vary them. Listen, I do different things as a trader, but I'm always using, this is my favorite system, okay? And um, here's, a, here's a trade right here where, where you took your scalp right here. This is a nice big one. It may not be, this is natural gas, so this is probably not for a lot of people, but you had a nice scalp here. And But look, be careful because you have, this is another signal here. Again, when we extend like this, uh, you would have been out here on, the, on, on this extension. So, Again, I, this is the way, and another way to do it, and I'm going to show you something that may look like um, may look like curve fitting. Let me go back to um, let me go back to the crude. Uh, let's see if the 10 minute chart, and I'm almost wrapping it up here. Um, this is the 10 minute chart in crude, and um, sometimes you you look at something and you wind up. This is actually not the perfect chart to do it. If you change time frames, it can sometimes expose a signal for you. Let's look at uh, silver market is something that uh, been kind of fun to trade. Uh, this is it. and look at this. Here's a signal right here. Now, of course, this is a big. You've got to take a micro contract in silver, which is a very small contract, and selling two here, and you would have. I don't know what you may or may not have been knocked out. I wasn't here, but if this happened, if you took your limit sell here and then got knocked out. I don't think that's probably what happened. I think that what happened since this market was higher, looks like it opened here, probably came all the way high, didn't knock you out, and then came all the way back, took your scalp here, and then went all the way down to here. But let, let's say you were you were looking to get in, keep our eye on this and keep our eye on here. There's no position, but you think, boy, if I, if I combine some of these candles, maybe I can, um, this is a 10 minute, Let's see what a 15 looks like. Um, oh, look, this exposed a signal. See, I want parameters. Not only did it expo it's exposed a signal here, where, um, and here's a, a winner and a loser followed by another winner. Um, let's see, not here, but you catch my drift. The idea is that you can move through time frames to expose signals. You're going to get losers in this particular method. But that's okay because you're going to get plenty of winners too, and you're going to move on. And the fact that you're not in that conundrum about do I take my profit or not, uh, and that you're not a scalper that's complaining about not being in for the big moves, and you're not a swing trader wishing you had taken the low hanging fruit, you're both. This is a terrific trading plan. I've been trading this myself almost exclusively for two years. And the majority of people that have tried this with me are now doing either using this in combination with some of the other things they're doing or using it exclusively. Let me show you um, real quickly and then we're going to say goodbye. Um, let me take you to this. This is the um, offer that I wanna make to you today. And it's for this presentation only. I guess I try to smile here at the end. This is for this presentation only, okay? If you go to simpletradingplans.com, you will see 
this trading system. You can see it all, it's gonna lay, lay it out for you from the standpoint of explaining what you get, okay? And I want you to use the coupon code ST30, which is going to give you $500 off, okay? And at the end of this event, you know, I've got to, if I don't give you a, a line in the sand, you won't take action. And if you're not a person that takes action, you're not going to win uh, in, in futures trading or any other kind of trading. I, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to force you to take action. What I'm saying is that if this sounds good to you, if this looks good to you, if what I'm saying to you makes sense, then, then take action because the risk is mine. The risk is mine. I'm saying to you, and you'll see the, how I explain exactly what that risk is. And in fact, um, in, this, in, in this offer, um, not only are you getting all the material and we meet and we have a separate group, but I also have a one, I give everybody a one-on-one -on -one with me when you go through the videos and there are only like seven videos or ten, actually about 10 short videos. There's no video over 15 minutes. And if you just look at those videos, and, and once you get a, an idea and maybe you've come to a meeting within those 60 days, then we meet and I crystallize it for you. I wanna hear about how you trade your personality and I'll explain some of those nuances to you that I think could fit you that you may wanna try, okay? Because having a custom trading plan for yourself, um, using the, the skeletal rules and then adding the nuances that fit you, this is what, this is how you make a successful trader out of yourself, okay? And you, and with this idea of scalping and swing trading and being able to use it on any, any length chart, any bar chart of any length, um, you're going to be able to fit it to who you are. And by fitting it, you're going to be able to run the trading plan without stepping on your, your own feet, okay? There's a better way of saying stepping on your own feet we're a family here. So I'm, all I'm saying to you is that, look, try this out. If you've enjoyed this conversation, and if you show, it's not a conversation, if you join this lecture that I've just given you, and, and you want to deal with somebody who's real about this and how, how it really is in trading, I urge you to take a look and try this out. Try, join the disciplined trader family. Join the simple trading plan family. Try this loaded gun plan. I really think you're going to like it. Um, and if you don't, the risk is mine. David, I appreciate always the opportunity to present at your affairs because uh, you always give me a time to explain and uh, you never build walls around me and let me be myself. You don't tell me to act uh, accordingly. Uh, I feel like Bill Maher sometimes. I'm, uh, <laughs> even though I'm not sure I'm, I'm with his, all of his politics, but I do wanna say thank you to you and thank you to, um, to, what, to what you're doing. And there's some great traders here I mentioned Marina. I'm, I'm sure you have her on. Uh, if not, um, you ask her. But um, I, I, there's a lot of great traders. Stick around. If my thing didn't hit you, um, somebody else's will. But, but if I did, give it a try.